Welcome to this week's Mission Compass. We've got a special episode talking to one of our very own GALCOM staff members, Grace Constable. Why are we talking to our own staff members? That seems a little self-serving. Not really. She just went on a missions trip to Peru. We'd love for you to come on a missions trip with us too. God wants us all to be witnesses, whether it's right where you are, next city over, next country over, around the world. Acts 1.8, you'll be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. We want you to be a part of the Great Commission. So here on the Mission Compass, we're always introducing you to new opportunities to serve. So like, subscribe, notify. You never want to miss an episode because you might don't want to miss the one that's right fit for you. You're unique. God's made you special, but he still wants to use you. I'm just trying to find where you fit in all of this, like that last missing puzzle piece. So sit back, relax. Bonnie's sale of guidelines not only has her reset devotional, but a great testimony what God is doing around the world through their radio ministry. So sit back, relax. Here comes the Mission Compass. Welcome to GALCOM's Mission Compass podcast. To learn more about GALCOM and our guests today, visit galcom.org. The thing about it was it didn't matter that it was disgusting. It was honestly horrible to my taste buds, but I think that was one of the happiest times I had on my trip because they had put so much effort into making something that they thought we would like. They did all of that just to please us and just to thank us. Hello, friend. Welcome to GALCOM's Mission Compass, your guide to the Great Commission. I'm Ron Harris. Before our host, Tim Whitehead, tells us about someone who's living out the Great Commission, I believe you have a special request for us, right, Tim? Yes, I do, Ron. Thank you for the chance to get our friends listening, praying for us. And I'm going to kind of let everybody behind the curtain, so to speak, here at GALCOM. So we, besides producing the Mission Compass radio program, encouraging you to get involved in the Great Commission somehow, some way, our main job here at GALCOM is making radios, solar-powered, fixed-tuned radios that we distribute to missionaries all over the world so they can reach more people with the gospel every day. 60% of the population of the world doesn't have electricity. 70% doesn't read. There's all sorts of other geographical barriers and political barriers for people to hear the gospel. Radio is the most efficient way for one person sitting behind a microphone with the right equipment to talk to hundreds of thousands of people all over the place, like I'm doing right now. But our little solar radios have a rechargeable battery inside, so they can be used indoors or at night. We've got a real issue. You know, sometimes I wonder, should I be sharing this kind of thing? But our supplier didn't do right by us. And we have a large batch, over 10,000 batteries that are not performing to the level that we demand. Our radios have to be top quality. We make them as durable as possible. We want them to last 10 20 years out in the field. This isn't just a throwaway thing like your cell phone. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I'm saying that you a couple hundred dollars to buy a cell phone, you got to just throw it away after a couple of years. No, where our radios go, they've got to last. They've got to work. And so these batteries need to last. We need prayer to resolve this. We need to figure out what to do with these batteries. We need to get more. We have a demand for our radios. We have to fill orders for other ministries, Cambodia, South Sudan, and uh, Lesotho, and so on. They need the batteries inside. We can't ship them without them. Pray with us, please, that God will intervene on our behalf, that we can get a resolution, get the right tools, the right parts for our radios so that more people can hear about Jesus. That's our prayer request, Ron. Thank you, Tim. You can be updated on GALCOM's daily prayer needs. Just visit our website, galcom.org. And now, Tim, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, right after Bonnie Sala joins us for our regular weekly Reset devotional, she's going to share a little bit what God is doing through her ministry, Guidelines International. And then our admin assistant here at GALCOM, Grace Constable, just came back from a missions trip to Peru. And so I'm going to grab her and bring her here into the studio. We're going to talk a little about what she experienced. It's her first time ever on a missions trip. And we want to encourage you to go too. So I thought, hey, why not have someone that's done it for the first time Try to convince others, get involved, come with us on a trip, share your faith in Jesus, share what God has done in your life, hand out a radio, hand out an audio Bible in the local language, change someone's eternity. So that's coming up a little bit later in the program. But before we get to that, just a a little bit of an update. We have another missions trip going back down to Peru. Uh, The last trip was to Huncayo. This one's to Ayacucho. 
Of course, you know where those places are, right? Everyone's familiar with their Peruvian geography. Uh, I'm not. Uh, different dialects, different uh, Quechua dialects there too. So we had to be very careful what we did with the audio Bibles. But that's an aside. So we have another trip going end of July, beginning of August down to Peru. In the fall, we have a trip going down to Oaxaca, Mexico. Maybe you'd like to join us. Visit our website, galcom.org. There's information in there about how to get involved in the missions trip, how to join us. Love to have you come with us to share your faith and your love of Jesus with others. Coming up in a couple weeks or so, we're going to have some more Galcom staff join with us. Uh, They were just in Liberia and Ghana putting up some new radio stations, doing some repairs, replacing a transmitter. That's the other side of our work here at Galcom. We make the radios and we build the stations. We've got some more stations that we want to put in too. Uh, We want to go down to DR Congo. We want to go back to South Sudan and finish the studios of a station that we were working on a little while ago in Capoeira. We're doing stuff all over the world. We're trying to get some help for a gentleman in Bolivia, a pastor that was hit by a train that wants to share the gospel. Obviously, I think he's lost one leg, if I'm remembering the story right, and is crippled in the other and can't get around. Radio's the answer. We're going to go down and we're going to help this guy get a radio station going. So you want to find out about that. But how do we make all this possible? How do we fund this? Because of people like you praying for us, partnering with us financially. And just for fun every year, we hold a golf tournament. Yes, a golf tournament. It, it's a silly thing, but hey, it gets people involved. People get out. I get to say hi and get to say thanks here in the local area. But back in the COVID years, we started doing what we called a virtual golf tournament. If you want to go on our website, uh, galcom.org, and click on the golf tournament, there's an option to golf virtually. Well, you can golf actually, but not at our tournament uh, close to our office here in Hamilton, Canada. You can golf from wherever. Just register with us, $50, and most of that's going to go to providing radios to people in Lesotho. That's the project that we're going to be working towards. Take some pics, put it on social media, put a hashtag up. We're going to send you a little gift bag, some golf balls and tees and some other info about the project in Lesotho and about the work at Galcom. Just a fun way to make a change in someone's life, this time in Lesotho and inside of South Africa there. You're going to share a little bit more about the the country of Lesotho later on uh, as that gets closer. We'd love to have you just get involved, do something fun leverage social media, let people know that you love Galcom, that you're supporting us. Hey, if I could change a life by golfing every day, I'd do it, but I got to do some real work too. But hey, once a year, do something fun, do some golfing, raise some money for radios, for Galcom, for missionaries that we partner with around the world. Visit our website for more information about that. Hey, we better get to our program. So right after this little short message, over to Bonnie Sala. You may be listening to us on your computer, but you can also find us on your smartphone using Spotify, iTunes, or other streaming platforms. Just go to galcom.org and choose your favorite. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and share our podcast. Mariam is sad and living with regret. Unfortunately, she shares, I ruined my relationship with my daughter-in-law. I'm Bonnie Sala with Reset. Mariam recounts, During a difficult time, I told my daughter-in-law that it was her fault that there are now many problems in the family. Now I realize that to lose your temper just once can ruin a relationship. I should never have said such things. Nate isn't sure what he did that has kept his son from speaking to him for over two years. The broken relationship pains him every day, but despite his efforts, his son doesn't respond to his texts, cards, or calls. The Proverbs say, an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. What do you do when it seems that a relationship is irrevocably broken, whether by your own doing or not? Scripture says, indeed, we all make many mistakes, so perfection in relationship isn't the goal. Asking for forgiveness for what we've done or even for what we may not realize we've done is always the beginning of healing, but it takes two people to mend a relationship. In the meantime, Mariam says, I pray that God will give me patience in restoring that relationship. God is all about healing of relationship, first between us and Him, and then between us and others. Lest we get discouraged in the process, Scripture encourages us. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. As we keep loving and keep praying, we're reminded the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. I'm Bonnie Sala with Reset. To read, share, or hear this again, or to find more resources like this, visit guidelines.org. 
Well, thank you, Bonnie, for sharing again from the Reset Devotional. We use it every morning here at Galcom as a staff to kind of reset before we get to our workday. But Bonnie, you're sharing these around the world, 26 languages. Any testimonies of the impact that you're having? Yes. You know, speaking of reset, we who have access to the gospel have free and plentiful access to the gospel. You know, maybe we need to reset our spiritual lives and kind of get ourselves back on track, but we have a base from which we were operating. Many people around the world in places like Russia, for example, don't have that understanding of the gospel that they've kind of had in the back of their minds, or at least they had access if they wanted to explore it for their entire lives. In places like Russia and places like Muslim-majority countries, it's a process in coming to understand the gospel. Here's a woman from Russia who writes, I am not a Christian, but I like to listen to guidelines online. You bring hope and comfort in my life. There is a lot of pain and suffering in life instead of joy and happiness. Why is life so difficult? I'm always thinking about this. And finally, I found the answer to my question in your program. Thank you very much. Listening to your programs, I became kinder and more understanding of people's needs. I know I need to go to church where I will find peace with God, and I will. So Elena is on her way to coming to an understanding of the gospel and of Jesus' saving power in her life. We can't underestimate the power of the gospel. As you mentioned, we, a lot of us have a Christian worldview. We're exposed to Christianity. We have resources and things like that. But here's someone just for the first time, maybe they're, they're getting exposed to it, but the power of the word of God, the Holy Spirit and dwelt word of God, transforming them so dramatically is just really encouraging to me. Yes. And it really speaks to the power of radio, of, of these tools that God has given to us, because radio is a constant companion. You know, many of our partners will play a devotional every single day for an entire week. And people will, they love to listen over and over because these concepts are completely new and God just gradually brings understanding and clarity to their hearts and minds. Yeah, so, hey, friends, join us here in at Galcom at Guidelines. Support the work so people will be able to hear the good news of Jesus Christ over and over again, meditate on it, let the Holy Spirit work on their hearts. Bonnie, always so encouraged by the testimonies you bring. Thanks for the opportunity, Tim. Stories can influence, teach, and inspire us to tell our story of salvation to others. Galcom International presents Stories of the Great Commission. Kind of a middle-aged woman, married with children and many extended family members. She and her husband were invited to listen to the station because they liked music. And of course, she caught the message of the songs that we play. And then, uh, out of curiosity, began listening for the teaching programs as well. Within a few months, she and her husband had both decided to make a commitment to Christ. People just began saying, there's something that's different about you, and we want to know why. They began telling people to tune in the radio station, and they began sharing their own story. And within the first year, they had led a large number of people in their extended family to the Lord. Discover how your story can make a difference for eternity. Learn more at galcom.org, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Galcom International make waves. Well, friends, last month, we sent a team down to Peru to hand out our solar-powered radios, audio Bibles to do an eyeglass clinic. And whenever we have a team go somewhere, I always want to talk to somebody that went to get their impressions, to, to hear what God did on that trip. And so joining us in studio is our very own administrative assistant, Grace Constable, who got to go on the trip. Grace, first time here. You've been working here for over a year, and this is your first time in the studio. That's right. It feels strange. <laughs> so I'm really glad that you got to go on this trip. Really glad you got to experience this. We try to do this with all of our staff to see the radios in action. Mm -hmm. But this is extra special for you because this was your first time ever on a plane. Yeah, yeah. I took uh, six planes in the past couple weeks. And um, I actually was not nervous about it because I love roller coasters. <laughs> um, and I love, like, if you're on a ship and there's, like, some waves, I really enjoy that. So I was always told by my family that, like, you would love flying, Grace. So I was not nervous about it at all. And so I ended up loving it. And I actually, I preferred the smaller planes with more turbulence. <laughs> oh, so you dear. could kind of feel it more, you know? <laughs> okay. Wow. You know you're in the air, you know? Uh, yeah, so those big ones, yeah, there's no movement. Yeah, yeah boring, you yes. just sit there and watch movies. It's uh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on from that experience, first time to go on a missions trip like this as well. So the, flying to Lima, being up and then a small little flight up to Wanaco. 
And then you're there. You're in a small little village. First thing that hits you when you're there. First of all, we got on the tarmac off the plane and there were just mountains everywhere. Like the airport in Huanaco, it is literally surrounded by like a horseshoe of mountains. And so I was just dumbstruck. And then the first thing that I start noticing is, first of all, there's a bunch of cacti. And then (laughs) after that, I'm looking up the hill and there's these little tiny houses They actually look like cardboard boxes because they're so tiny from there and really just simply made. And that's what people are living in. And so that was right away. That major shift from even Lima was quite different. Yeah. So that's the distance view. Then you got up close and personal, handing out the radios. Tell us about the people that you met. You mentioned their their houses look like cardboard boxes. So we're talking not a lot of infrastructure here. No, definitely not. First village that we went to is called Vilcabamba. It's definitely the least developed village as well. And just incredible people. Like, I'll never forget the feeling. It was amazing because they had almost nothing, but they were incredibly generous. I remember just like walking in and being overwhelmed by the sense of love and giving. Even as I was handing out things to them, I knew that they were giving back love and appreciation to me. And we were able to do an eyeglasses clinic in that village. And then we had a dinner before the radio distribution. And they made us like American style kind of food. Air quotes for those who can't see. Yeah, (laughs) um, with air quotes around it. And it was honestly some of the most disgusting food I've ever eaten. (laughs) It was potatoes, but they were like slimy. That's how greasy they were. I have, I, there are suspicions that it was like oil off of a pig skin. It was Mm. terrible. Um, I couldn't even eat the chicken. Like I, I ended up eating guinea pig on this trip and I actually quite enjoyed it, but like I couldn't eat the chicken. So I kind of discreetly ended up giving it to some kids afterwards. But anyway... (laughs) The thing about it was it didn't matter that it was disgusting. It was honestly horrible to my taste buds. But I think that was one of the happiest times I had on my trip because it was these giant bowls of food, first of all, and these people don't have a lot. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they had put so much effort into making something that they thought we would like, something that wouldn't be totally outside of their comfort zone and totally outside of their norm. They did all of that just to please us and just to thank us. And that was really, their means to thank us was through that meal. And you could tell there was so much love behind it. Brings a new meaning to the, it's the thought that counts, saying that we <laughs> often say. But yeah, I, I, you know what? I've experienced that too, that overwhelming love and generosity. And you mm-hmm. feel, almost feel guilty because you see the poverty. Yeah. Now we, you have to deal cross language, cross culture. Talk about the ministry side. When you were presenting or, or we were working with Marcus and Zara, Valderrama, mm-hmm. our partners there, and they were the ones doing the preaching and so on. Mm-hmm. What was your impression of what where the people were spiritually, with their belief system and so on? Yeah. So spiritually, I mean, I didn't cover any fine points of theology with them, <laughs> but generally just so open, so mm. open to relationships, so open to scripture, so eager to hear the scriptures, so eager to receive more teaching, more about their savior. We actually ended up at a Keshwin wedding, a Protestant Keshwin wedding, and I was amazed because it was really just a worship service. That's what it was with, uh, you know, some official stuff at the end and just pouring their hearts out. A lot of surrender, I would say. I think that because maybe they don't have as much, they know how great their need is. And so just really humble, really open and very authentic. Did you get any feedback from the people there? I know that when I've been to Peru, but Bolivia, Quechua, very low literacy. So the audio Bibles we were handing out were essential and the same hunger. So did you get that impression there was like, this was a game changing, life changing to get an audio Bible? Definitely. There were people who could read. One of the villages, we were handing out physical copies of the Bibles. And that would actually be a highlight for me is I did the eyeglasses clinic and there would be people who before they received those glasses, they couldn't read their scriptures and then afterwards they could. And so to be the person to give them that ability was pretty incredible. But to your point, yes, there were people who didn't speak any Spanish, for example. Most people would speak some Spanish, but I know I gave eyeglasses to a lady. She couldn't read at all. 
but she was pointing to her sweater because she does fine sewing work. And so she couldn't see what she was doing. And so she brought a little sweater with all this fine detail work on it so she could check to see if she could see her work. And so these are the kinds of people that we were reaching. And definitely people came from long distances. Some people walked four hours just to receive this audio Bible and, and radio. Definitely seeing that this is a tool that they need. You mentioned that the meal although didn't quite appease your taste buds, was a highlight. Oh, yeah. Any other highlights where you just sat there and went, didn't expect this, didn't, and, but saw God move in a way that just is life transformative for you? You talked about the life transformative for the people giving out the glasses and the Bibles. What about you? I think one of the major highlights would have been the hospitality of our hosts. It was incredible. I remember the very first day we had gotten a morning flight from Lima to Juanico, and so we got there just in time for breakfast and we all were sitting down at the table and already our hosts were you know serving coffee and half of us don't even drink coffee regularly and so Marquez the father of the family he like looks around he realizes we don't drink coffee and I hadn't even realized this until he came back at that moment he got up from the table and went directly to a store to buy us juice and smoothies wow. and didn't say a word and I didn't even notice he had left until he was back with them so that we could have something to drink with our breakfast. And so it was in that moment that I realized, wow, these are incredible hosts and that's going to be life-changing. And so I think for me just the amount of willingness and the diligence they made us wonderful meals. They put in a lot of work every day cooking for us. And that was really quite life-changing because their life is their mission, right? They don't stop caring about people when they walk out of a church. They don't stop caring out for people once they've given out radios. Their life is a mission. And so I think even coming back, I'm like, I should like help my mom with my dishes, you know? <laughs> and, and that kind of simplicity and faithfulness. Yeah, that was pretty life-changing for me. Yeah, I want to just emphasize that here at Galcom, we don't have missionaries around the world. We rely on partners and we work hard to develop good, strong relationships with wonderful people like Marquez and Zara. And we have partners like this around the world that are pouring out their lives. And the fact that we could give them some radio equipment so they could reach more people, but more than that, to come alongside them and say, we love you so much. We care about the work you're doing. Let us come, even if we're here only for a week or two, mm -hmm. You're important. We love you. Let us help you any way we can. And it's reciprocal, right? They're loving us right back. But friends, if you want to come on a trip with us, some people say, oh, is it worth it going on a trip? I say yes, Grace. Absolutely. I would go again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and this is part of it. It's not just the ministry to people handing out Bibles, handing out audio Bibles and radios, handing out eyeglasses, all these wonderful practical things that we can do. It's the fellowship with the brothers and sisters in Christ that we have, like the, the Valderramas. I can't say enough good things about them. No. And to be able to go and encourage them. I mean, they're working hard. They probably don't yeah. have a lot themselves. No, they don't. And you can tell because we would have these meals. And if there were any leftovers, Marquez would keep eating. You know, if anyone didn't finish their meal, someone would have it. And so, you know, they did a fantastic job. It was a beautiful place to stay, everything like that. But you can tell that they're not living the lush life. Yeah. For me, it's like we went down and it's almost like a pat on the back saying, what you're doing is important. We're here behind you. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage them. And so friends, consider joining us on an upcoming trip. We're heading back down to Peru again to work with a different couple in a different part of Peru. We're going to head back to Mexico where we, uh, last year we had a team to Mexico. We want to go back to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Again, all in partnership. Come with us and meet some other brothers and sisters in Christ. Come along, bring your skills and abilities mm -hmm. and your love just to encourage them along in their work. Let them know they're not alone traveling to these little Quechua villages or what they're doing. So any last words, Grace, from the trip? Anything that really that you want to make sure everybody hears about besides the guinea pig and the other struggles? <laughs> and... I think that one of my big takeaways in general from the trip was obviously there's an incredible amount of need in these places. And to be able to be a part of meeting those needs was amazing. And to be able to encourage the people that are doing that day in, day out was amazing. But I think that one of the things that really struck me in getting to know some of the missionaries and their lives and their stories and how God is working their lives is that 
God is doing the same thing in their lives as they're doing here. And so God is saving people. God is bringing salvation and hope and joy and purpose to people's lives. And so when you see that here, that's what's going on in these different places. And that's what's needed most. Amen. Grace, so glad you got to go. So glad you're working with us here at Galcom. But friends, we're going to lose Grace soon. She's heading off to get her <laughs> master's in psychology out in British Columbia. We're going to lose her in a couple of months. We're really glad that you're here serving along with us. And hopefully these experiences, even your first flight, now your, your flight out to BC won't be, you know, a foreign thing. <laughs> no, I think I'll be a pro by then. <laughs> Very good. God bless you, Grace. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Mission Compass. Thanks for having me, Tim. Well, friend, we're at the end of our program today. You've been listening to Galcom's Mission Compass, your guide to the Great Commission. There are many ways to partner with us. To find out more, visit our website at galcom.org. That's galcom, spelled G-A-L-C-O-M dot org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I'm Ron Harris. Thanks for joining us today on Mission Compass, a radio ministry of Galcom International. If you enjoyed this podcast, we upload a new episode every Monday. You can also find us on the radio or other streaming platforms. We have a list on our website. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and share our podcast. Please rate this episode and leave a review. We would love to hear back from you. And we also want to know where you're listening from. So click Mission Compass on our website, tell us, and we'll send you Galcom's devotional, 30 Days of Faith.